just part two right now. This is just part two right now. I'm just gonna continue where I left off before. Um, this hexokinase is inhibited by its own glucose so phosphate. Um, that's pretty fun and dandy. But then uh, you have other things like random things like, uh, for example, um, like fluoride. Fluoride actually inhibits hexokinase. Maybe that's why um, if you have too much fluoride in your blood, it actually can become toxic because if it actually blocks this, the pathway gets blocked, right? Uh, let's just talk about there's three enzymes that actually, like I said before, three enzymes that control the glycolytic pathway. Um, next one, this one. This is the one that's test confusing because the mo one of these molecules that actually controls this and anesthetic factor looks like this name. And students generally confuse it. Fructose one sits by phosphate. This does not control this, but I'll tell you what it does. Fructose two sits by phosphate. Don't get confused between fructose one six and fructose two sits by phosphate. This is not in the pathway of this. Fructose two sits by phosphate is actually just um, an intermediate. You could call it intermediate, which monitors the hormone levels in the blood. And what it monitors is glycogen, uh, so glycogen here, and insulin. Now I'll explain that very soon. Okay, fructo, sits phosphofructo one kind of, Now anything that you think in biochem, you got to think very logically what's happening. And if you can't, there's always some logic behind this. You got to think again. For example, phosphofructo one kind of, is inhibited by citrate. Now you're thinking, where is citrate in this full process? And you won't find it in here unless you go to the TCA cycle or Krebs cycle. And if you don't know what that is right now, please just look in your book or on Google Images or something. And you see an intermediate in the citrate cycle is, uh, the TCA cycle, Krebs cycle is actually citrate. Now what it does is when that citrate is produced, it signals to this pathway, we have energy, we, we can make ATP. So it inhibits this. So if it inhibits this, the cells draw energy Therefore, this process stops and it gives a chance for the other cells to take up glucose and they don't have energy. So therefore, what else can inhibit this is ATP. Now, I'm talking about inhibition, but what can actually stimulate this? What can actually stimulate phosphor for to one kinase to actually increase its function? And, and that comes from um, one really important molecule. That is that fructose 2 6 by phosphate. I'll explain that soon, but what else I want to say to you is AMP, not ATP. ATP inhibits it. AMP signals there's no phosphate. Because if you study the structure of ATP, there's phosphates at the end, which are very unstable, that, that can be released and phosphorylate something. That's all chemistry. I don't want to go into that right now. But yeah, that's, I wrote that before actually. I wrote it here. AMP and fructose 2 sits by phosphate. Now, what produces this fructose 2 6 biphosphate is one bifunctional enzyme. There is a bifunctional enzyme called 6 phosphofructokinase 2, PFK2. Now, if you think about it before, I wrote PFK1. Don't confuse these two. PFK2 is responsible for producing, uh, actually taking, breaking down fructose 2 6 biphosphate, and this just is one molecule that acts on this enzyme. Yeah, I think now you're beginning to realize why sometimes it gets a bit complicated. But if you look at diagrams in the book, you'll understand what I'm trying to say here. And that's actually the hardest bit, I think, in glycolysis. If you understand that, so let's just study this enzyme that actually produces this. Here it is. This is uh, just a linear primary structure form of this uh, molecule. It has why, the reason why it's called bifunctional because it has two uh, actual functional parts. Uh, on the N terminal, it has a kinase part, and on the C terminal, it has a phosphatase part. Whenever you see A's, it means it takes a phosphate away from something. Okay, so what's happening is, uh, who is that? That's just, that's just my MSN. Um, uh, glycogen. Okay, for example, let's, let's think about it logically. Okay. Um, when do we actually have glucose in our body? Is when we eat something. It is taken from the small intestine, portal vein, everything. 
that's that should all come back to you from anatomy or something. But I don't want to go into that right now. Um, glucose has taken up. Okay, whenever there's glucose in the blood, insulin will be released. And if there's no glucose in the blood, not not I should say no glucose. When there's lower levels of glucose in the blood, glucagon is released. Now what happens is this glucagon acts on a receptor on the cell. Okay, this goes to adrenal cyclase. This uh, ultimately uh, a activates protein kinase A. Now, what this protein kinase, like I said before, phosphorylate something, phosphorylate something. If this protein kinase A phosphorylates as the kinase part of this bifunctional enzyme, what it does is it makes it inactive. Now, if this part is inactive, this part is active, and vice versa. If this is inactive, that's active. Either way, one of these two parts has to be active, so it's like an equilibrium in that sense. So if this part is phosphorylated, the phosphate, phosphatase part is actually active. So like the name suggests, the phosphatase part, what it does is it takes away the number two, the phosphate group of number two, on the photo two six base phosphate. So you are ended up with fructose, sits phosphate okay now this cannot activate this so therefore the pathway shuts down if you didn't get that just rewind this and just look at that again so that's what happens there but if you have something which actually removes this phosphate group out of this kinase that kinase becomes active and this fructose two sits I mean this fructose sits phosphate. If there's if there's a kinase, like I explained before, when there's a kinase, it will phosphorylate this fructose two sits phosphate, as it says in the name. Phosphofructokinase two. Fructose kinase two two sits by phosphate. When this molecule gets produced, it activates this PFK one. Therefore, the full pathway can continue and glycolysis is active. So what in what situation do you get the dephosphorylation of this? Is when you have insulin, the opposite of glucagon. Glucagon actually we're using protein kinase A, phosphorylates this. If you take that phosphate group away from this kinase, that bit's active, therefore this is inactive. Therefore, this and all what happens at the end is fructose two six phosphate can activate PFK one. Therefore, the process continues all the way down. Now, each of these stages has different names. For example, uh, this bit right here is called the splitting stage. Um, how important that is, I have I don't know. It depends on how crazy your teachers are. I think not, uh, but. Um, what you gotta definitely remember, remember is the regulatory enzymes. I can't stress that enough. That's really, really important. Another tricky stuff that at the polar exam is you know say, oh, where is for example, uh, glucose, glucose, uh, transporter number four? Where is that? Because that's the odd one out. Because that's glucose dependent. Every other glucose transport I think that we know of is independent. Therefore, as the name says, independent. It doesn't depend on insulin to take up the glucose. But that glut for those. So where is that glut for uh, receptor? It's actually in fat cells. And if you think about it, that makes sense. When there's a lot of glucose in the body, uh, a lot of insulin will be released. Therefore, these glut for proteins can actually work. Uh, I mean, can actually become. Basically, they would allow you to take your glucose into the fat cells. It shows that you have a lot of glucose, because how as you will learn later on. In your university life, if you haven't been chucked out yet for partying too hard or something, um, I hope my dad never heard that. <laughs> I'm just messing. Um, uh, for example, in pathology, you would get something like hyperglycemia, and that's very dangerous, especially for the brain because it can induce hyperglycemic coma. And what happens is generally your body wants to maintain a five. Uh, level of uh, glucose in the body, uh, in the blood. Um, that's, that's the optimum rate at which your brain can take up the glucose. 
Um, I don't want to go into that. That's a lot of physiology. But that, that's what I'm trying to say to you: is your body's trying to maintain something, and and it has a lot of things that keep it as a, as an equilibrium. Like these two enzymes, this one enzyme, which has two different parts. Okay. The last thing that I want to talk about is this pyruvate kinase. That's the last regulatory enzyme of this pathway. Now this is also infected by glycogen and insulin, and so, so some sort of safe process happens here. Um, an important thing you should realize that by now, especially for people who be paying real close attention, these regulatory enzymes, the pathways, they are irreversible steps. That's a reversible step, the fructose to uh, fructose 6-phosphate back to glucose 6-phosphate. These are irreversible steps. Therefore, you can block this quite easily and uh, get active on very easily as well. And uh, I don't want to go on too long right now. I don't want to bore you. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Um, hopefully, you find this interesting. I'm just going to leave you with one little fact um, or a fact that they call it. It's called, it's called the Wurtberg effect. Um, yeah, I wrote it down right here. The Wurtberg effect. What it's trying to say is in tumor cells, when you have a tumor cell, this actual pathway of glycolysis is actually increased four to ten times. Therefore, the rate of glycolysis in tumor cells is much higher than normal. Therefore, all these enzymes are working at a much higher rate. I thought I'd just leave you that interesting because it can actually pull some sort of little tricks on you in the exam and say, oh, what's the work to the effect and how is that even relevant to glycolysis or even biochemistry? And you can actually write that down and it would actually interest them, especially in the oral exams. Um, the study materials we need, are, um, I would recommend a really good biochemistry book with a lot of diagrams. Because if you don't visualize it, it'll make it much easier to memorize. Um, the book I used was mainly, um, what's it called, Lippincott, Lippincott? Um, it has a really, it's a, it has a blue cover, um, the ISB number for that was, um, I think it was it, 9780781769600, oh, I, I, I don't know, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think that was it. Um, yeah, but anyway, if you, um, I might just post that later on. The actual ISBN number. I think that was the ISBN number though. That book has really good diagrams that could actually really help you in biochemistry. Um, it's gonna really help you visualize it, especially this concept of PFK one and PFK two, and fructose two six bisphosphate because they definitely bring these sort of fructose 2 sits by phosphate and fructose 1 sits by phosphate in the exam just to confuse you um, I don't know why they do that it's a bit annoying but they will actually do that so if you want to get past that it's very easy to, for you to just study it quite easily right now at least that has been in such a beautiful way <laughs> now anyway um, this was my first YouTube video uh, I would really appreciate some good feedback um, on where I can improve or where I've gone wrong I'm um, just trying to improve my communication skills, so hopefully this was a good video. Um, I wish you guys good luck, um, especially if you're one of them people right now who are studying for that exam and you think you're a bit late, I wish you good luck. It won't be that bad, I think it'll be alright. Anyways, you guys have a good morning, a good night, depending on what time you're watching this. Bye.